Hi everyone, we welcome you now to the fifth Sunday of Easter here on behalf of the Rotterdam United Methodist Church and also it is a celebration of Mother's Day. So happy, Mother, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. As we uh, center ourselves, take some time to center ourselves, I just want to remind you that we are still in the season of Easter. It's not just one day. It's, a, it's a, an entire season where we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. And so today we're going to be concentrating on not letting our hearts be troubled. Uh, that comes from the Gospel Scripture today. And there's also um, learning about God is our rock and refuge from one of the book of Psalms. <clears throat> so let's take a time now to create and center ourselves in this time of worship. Let us connect our hearts with one another. So once again, we're going to center our hearts as, as we begin. So let's take a deep breath, deep breath together. And I invite you to place your hand on your heart and then lightly tap it in a slow heartbeat rhythm. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation, help us to take this time to center on you, for you made us and you gave us life, and you continue to be with us every moment, every breath, every step. And now we hear this assurance once again from God. Be still, O oh heart, you're not alone. Your beat is shared with me. Come now and come and center here, your mind secure and free. So I want you to take one more deep breath, loosen up those shoulders, and let go of that tension and just let it go as you exhale. You might need another one. And then exhale. <clears throat> and once again, we pick up our heart stone and we remember that as we touch the service, it reminds us of God's touches within us, between us, and around us. As close and real as this object is in our hands right now, it's how close the love is to us always. And so today, one of the things we're going to be doing later in this service is we're going to imagine letting go of our worries because we know in, and we're going to put it into God's heart of love. So into your care, God, we offer now our worries, fear, and strife. We turn to you and know you're near, your light, our love, and life. And one of the joys I had this week was I got a beautiful little stone here that says love on it. And mine actually says, love each other because love comes from God, from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. And I want to thank the person who sent that to me. I appreciate that. So, one of the beautiful songs that I want you to hopefully click on a link to uh, later when you get a chance is the song called His Eyes on the Sparrow. And it's all about, with, if God can take care of a sparrow, we know that God can watch over us and take care of us. So I hope that you will click on that link, too, from this service. But in honor of mothers, I want to also sh share this prayer. So let us pray for mothers today. God, our Creator, we pray. We pray for new mothers coming to terms with new responsibility. We pray for expectant mothers wondering and waiting. We pray for those who are tired, stressed, or depressed. For those who struggle to balance the tasks of work and family and, and teaching their young ones while they're home during this pandemic. We also pray for those who are not, unable to feed their children due to poverty and due to being unemployed. We also pray for those children who have physical, mental, or emotional disabilities. And we pray for those moms who have children that they do not want. And for those moms who raise children on their own. For those mothers who have also lost a child. And we pray for those mothers who care for the children of others. And for those moms whose children have left home. We also pray for those who desire to be a mother and it has not yet been fulfilled. But God, we bless, we ask that you bless all mothers, that their love may be deeper and tender, and that they may lead their children to know and do what is good, living not for themselves alone, but for you, God, and for others. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, as we hear our gospel text, we're also going to hear about images of the house that God has prepared for all. Because Jesus is going to tell us that when we remember him and know him in our hearts, we also will know God. 
So as we sit around together, whether you're in your pajamas and just being nice and comfy, or whether you're sitting around a table and having a meal, know that when we ask Jesus to be with us, we sit in this place of God together in spirit with all others as well, not just us together, but all those throughout the world. So I am going to invite you to repeat this prayer after me. Let us pray. God, our host, we gather in your name, invited by Jesus, bound together with your spirit, in union with each other, feed our bodies and our spirits with your comforting presence so that we might be your comfort to others. We know that God is in our midst, forming us to be God's own people. And though the way may be difficult, we know that God will be with us. So we need not fear. In the Lord, we know that we can take our refuge because God is our strength. So I invite you to come to the Lord who will surround you with God's own righteousness. And we ask, Lord, that you open our hearts and our spirits so that we may faithfully follow you all the days of our lives. Amen. Our first scripture reading is going to come from the book of Psalms. It's from the 31st chapter, verses 1 through 5 and 15 through 16. This psalm today mentions something we've been using throughout this Easter season. It mentions rocks. And I have brought my other rock here today, too. <clears throat> it, and God here is described many times throughout the Bible as a rock, as something that is a solid foundation and a shelter in time of distress. So hear the trust of the writer, even as hard times are upon them. I take refuge in you, Lord. Please never let me be put to shame. Rescue me by your righteousness. Listen closely to me. Deliver me quickly. Be a rock that protects me. Be a strong fortress that saves me. You are definitely my rock and my fortress. Guide me and lead me for the sake of your good name. Get me out of this net that, that's been set for me because you are my protective fortress. I entrust my spirit into your hands. You, Lord, God of faithfulness, you have saved me. My future is in your hands, so don't hand me over to my enemies, to all who are out to get me. Shine your face on your servant. Save me by your faithful love. May God bless the reading of this word today. Thanks be to God. We also have a scripture from the Gospel of John. And in this scripture, we hear about our future, which is in the hands of love in the heart of God. Jesus as God in the flesh helps us to know that we are in the house and family of God. Jesus called God Abba, an intimate name that a child would call a parent in the language Jesus spoke. So God wasn't distant, but a parent who loves tenderly, protects faithfully, and wants us to know intimately. So I want you to hear these words as Jesus is comforting the disciples who are distressed at the thought of life, living life without him. And I'm reading from the Gospel of John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14, and I'm reading from an inclusive Bible translation. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith in me as well. In God's house there are many dwelling places. Otherwise, how could I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? I am indeed going to prepare a place for you, and then I will come back to take you with me, that where I am, there you may be as well. You know the way that leads to where I'm going. Well, Thomas replied, But we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I myself am the way. I am truth and I am life. No one comes to Abba God but through me. If you really knew me, you would know Abba God also. From this point on, you know Abba God and you have seen God. Rabbi, Philip said, show us Abba God and that will be enough for us. Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you don't know me? Whoever has seen me has seen Abba God. How can you say, show us your God? Don't you believe that I am in God and God is in me? The words I speak are not spoken of myself. It is Abba God living in me who is accomplishing the works of God. 
Believe me that I am in God and God is in me, or else believe of the works that I do. The heart and truth of the matter is, anyone who has faith in me will do the works I do, and greater works besides. Why? Because I go to Abba God, and whatever you ask in my name I will do, so that God may be glorified in me. Anything you ask in my name I will do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus himself, he cried out to God from the Hebrew scriptures that were his holy texts and what we read today. Into your hands I commit my spirit. This is the kind of relationship that God wants us to have, like what he had with Jesus, to be able to let go of our need to control the future, I, our anxiety about what is going to happen, which we cannot know right now, and it's to have us allow God to comfort us. Jesus reminded his disciples, and he reminds us, to put our trust in God, even when our hearts are troubled. And it's okay to be troubled, and we certainly have seen this throughout this pandemic. We know there's a lot of people that are troubled right now, a lot of people that have troubled hearts. But even when we have these troubled hearts, even when our minds may be working overtime, our hearts can be rest assured that we are in God's love. It's a steadfast love is what God shows us and what we are called to offer each other. In this way, we are also in the presence of God through Christ so that others may know this comfort of the divine one. And I think about when Thomas said, how do we know the way that we are going? You know, we don't know the way, show us the way. And Jesus said, I am the way. So the more we spend time with Jesus, the more we spend time with God, in prayer, in lifting one another up, in the Bible and the scriptures, the more I believe we can let our troubles be lifted up to God, but also to trust that God is the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. And and it's one of those things that as we struggle and you know, this past week I was anxious about some things and I had no control over it because I couldn't go to a hospital to be there with my family. I just had to wait. I had to wait till I could hear that everything was okay. But the one thing that was a blessing for me was I could put out a prayer request. And I know you lifted up my family in prayer. And that was a comfort to me. That means so much. And I thank those who sent me emails and texts and asking how everything went and, and made phone calls. That's one way that we can show God's love to one another. So I wanted to thank you for that. Another thing that we've been talking about, we've been using rocks throughout all this. And, you know, we have this rock, which is this beautiful, nice, spherical rock, you know, nice and smooth and, and like with no flaws at all. And then this is the rock I was been telling you about earlier that I found. And you can see it's got, it's kind of rough and ragged and, um, but it's a sturdy rock, but it's got a lot of, uh, a lot of flaws into it. It's not the same as this nice, smooth, polished rock. But there's something about these rocks that draws me to what was being said in the psalm. You know, the person who wrote that psalm talked about God being a rock and a refuge. And sometimes we know that life just gets difficult. And there's this um, thing that sometimes we wonder if we're going to make it through something. We let things pile up. We wonder if we can handle everything and then sometimes it seems that they fall apart. But God is a rock and a refuge. A rock, something solid on which we can depend. And when you build a house, you need to have a really good foundation. Because if you don't have a good foundation, what happens to the house that's built upon it? It can fall apart. So, as much as I would like to be all nice and smooth and polished as this rock is right here, I tend to look a lot more like this rock here with all of its um, characteristics, let's put it that way. <clears throat> and yeah, I do have some jagged and rough edges sometimes and some things that, you know, are not perfect in me. I have flaws. I'm a human being. Um, and sometimes it's difficult for me to trust. And maybe sometimes you've had difficulties trusting in someone else too, because maybe you've been hurt when you've been growing up or somebody 
what we call backstabbed you, you know, stabbed you in the back doing, you know, working around you when it was your turn for a promotion and instead they took it away from you. But regardless of whether it's this rock or this rock, it doesn't really matter because what's most important is that God is the one who loves me, whether I look like this or whether I look like this. Whether I am have um, smooth sailing sometimes in my life or whether things get a little bit crazy and a little bit disjointed, God loves me all the same. And God is saying I can put my trust in Him. God is saying I can put my trust in this divine presence that loves me and watches over me and will forgive me and is patient with me, which boy do I need sometimes. But it's also saying that you don't have to be troubled all the time. Let go of your troubles because I am there. I am your rock and I am your refuge. And so it's, it's one of these things that God can help take away those jagged edges and smooth the surfaces and make me more like this if I put my trust in God. So in you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Please do not let me ever be put to shame. And in your righteousness, I ask that you deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress for your name's sake. I ask that you lead me and guide me. Take me out of that net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. For into your hand I commit my spirit, and I know that you have redeemed me. O Lord, faithful God, you are our rock and our refuge. And I ask you, when you think about these rocks, think about the strength and solid features of the rocks. Think about the brokenness and the jagged edges. And as you keep holding it, know no matter what, God is still loving you and working with you and all your jagged edges, all the difficulties you may face, God is still there with you, strengthening you, and will be your fortress and be your refuge. Now I have another little uh, thing I want to share with you today. We've been taking these rocks and we've been putting them, last week we put them in the water and I want to drop the, water, drop the rocks into the water. We found that the water overflows as a symbol of God's overflowing love for us. But sometimes maybe we need to write something down. And so I have a little, well, I call it a tin, but it's actually a God box. And you can take a shoe box, you can take whatever you want to make your own little God box, okay? And it's a way of writing down things that you're anxious about or if problems that you feel are too big to handle something that may feel overwhelming and or maybe it's something you haven't quite figured out yet and you just don't know what to do at the moment so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write something down and I'm going to put it in my little God box and I'm going to put it in there and so it's a way of me letting it go for a while and giving it to God So I can take this and I can put it in here. And I'm going to turn it over and let it be for God. Now some of you may think that I need a much bigger box to put all my worries and anxieties. And, and it may seem that way, especially what, with everything that we're going through with the pandemic, with you know the stay at home, with all the people that are getting sick, and especially now all the things that we've heard about children, especially down in New York City that are, are um, getting other um, illnesses and stuff based upon this virus. Uh, but I'd like to think that God can handle, whether it's this size or this size, God is all powerful, God can handle it all. And it reminds me too that when I was at the, in the Holy Land, there's the Wailing Wall, it's the Western Wall, it's part of the, one part of the temple that's left from way back when. And when you go there, you can put your pieces of paper into the little cracks in the wall, your prayers and everything, and you can lift them up to God. And then every now and then the rabbis will come and they'll take all those prayers and they take them and they burn them and lift them all up to God. 
so that it all goes up. And so I can think about that too. So maybe that's what I'll do when I fill up my box with different worries, anxieties, or problems, or things I feel overwhelmed with. Maybe when I feel it's ready, I can take them all and just burn them and lift them up to God. <clears throat> but please do it safely. So if you do that, um, you know, it's one of those things that just letting it go and helping free your mind from all the things that are worrying you, all the things that are distressing you at this time, and may, you may even discover a new way to look at something. So uh, hopefully you'll get some, something a little bit more creative than me, but I invite you to try and do that. Our theme throughout this time of Easter is, is, is finding ways to work together, be together. The early disciples did that in the book of Acts where they ate food with glad and generous hearts and they shared everything that they had with one another. So one way that we can be glad and generous is to share about how we are finding strength, hope, love, and peace in these days, especially during this pandemic and this time of being um, stay-at-home orders. So whether we break this bread in physical bread, one of the ways that we can do this is to open up our hearts to one another as well. And in this week's scripture that we had, we are invited to trust in God trust that God is our rock and fortress, and to also take a break from our worry. So here are these questions. Are you finding it difficult to let go of worry or to take a break? Are there just so many things that are overwhelming you at this time? Has there been anything that you've witnessed this week that has helped you feel an ongoing and steadfast love that was comforting? Is there anything else that you can think of in your memory as, as something or someone that has offered you comfort? Think about those questions. It's something that we have been reflecting on each week, and I invite you to reflect on it again this week as well. And there's another song that I'm going to invite you to click on a link, which is called Nothing Can Trouble. It's a Taze song. It's a great way of centering yourself, but it speaks about how nothing can trouble, nothing can harm you. God alone fills us and needs us and, and, and supports us. So let us now pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, we know that it's difficult not to be near some of the people we love and might be worried about. And even during this Easter season, which was so bright and, and we thrill, were thrilled about celebrating Easter, even if it was a, apart from one another, it seems now that it is dimmed in our midst. We've allowed ourselves to slip back into old habits and attitudes. We ask you to bring us again to your resurrection spirit, that we might know of your abiding love and presence. We want to place our trust in Jesus. We want to be of service to you by serving others. But our courage and our strength waver, and we wonder if we can do the work that you have set before us. It would be so easy for us to turn away. We ask that you turn us around, Lord, and remind us that we are lifting up people that we care about who are near and dear to us, who need your healing mercies and comforting love. And we too also stand in, the, in the, stand in need of the same compassion. We too need your love. We too need your guidance because you are the cornerstone. You are the strength to whom we can turn when our own strength has ebbed. We ask that you build us up to be a people of honor, integrity, and compassionate service to others. As we lift up these people before you that we wish were right here next to us, let us take a moment to name them now. And God, we also call to mind the people we cannot name, whose names we do not know, but we know they need our prayers and God's comfort. For those who have lost loved ones, for those who are sick and recovering, for those who are caring for loved ones or who are sick at home, for those who are caring for persons in medical care, for those who are separated from loved ones, for those who are feeling alone and isolated, for those who are helping and are so very tired, for those who are struggling to find friends, food and comfort, and for those who are afraid. Oh God, we give you thanks that you hear our prayers and we offer them all to you in the prayer that Jesus taught us saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to this time where we want to, again, receive our offerings. And if there's been a time here where you have felt called to contribute to this church and our ministries, we invite you to do so. You can send in your, your, your offering envelopes or you can uh, do something by PayPal. If you're not of our church but are still feeling called to support us, we would gladly appreciate that. But if you have a church of your own, please feel free to con con continue to contribute to them because we are here, even if we are virtual, we are here for you. So please stay with us and connect with us. And so let us now pray this prayer of gratitude to God. Loving God, as we offer our gifts to you, we know you see us more clearly than the world sees us, or even than we see ourselves. We have made foolish choices, valued things that were not worthy, and yet you have claimed us, deemed us precious, counted us worthy, saving by the death and resurrection of your Son. No gift that we can offer can come close to balancing out your relentless love, but we give them with a heart of gratitude. We give ourselves in the name of one, the, the one you gave for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And so now we come to this time where we have another egg. And in this egg, we'll hopefully find another word of encouragement. Oh, there's something different this time. It's not a Smarties. It is a Dove Dark Chocolate Easter Egg. Mmm, yum. And what does the word say this time? It says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. From Matthew 11, verse 28. So we have come... We have come to this time where we get ready to say until we meet again. And as we close this time together, I want you to remember that God is always with you. No matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right beside you, ready to hold you, to be a rock for you, guiding and directing your path. So acknowledge your fear and your worry and know it is as true and holy as any feeling, including joy and hope and love but know that God's heart is connected to your heart and God's love is there always for you. So be thankful, be grateful, and know that God's ultimate gift is love. May you in, um, take heart now and God be with us, be with you till we meet again. Amen. <laughs>